All right, looks like we're finally live. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another sorting session. We lately had a lot of technical problems, but hopefully they all resolved. So yeah, let's make a little bit of an announcement finally, and let's slap some code. How about that? How about that? So let me grab my uh, Discord uh, and make a little bit of an announcement. Okay. So red circle live on Twitch. And the question is, what the hell are we doing today? What the hell are we doing today? So today we continue developing our white noise generator in C. That's right. So I'm going to give the link to the uh, Twitch uh, channel. And we're going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinked. So there we go, the stream has been officially started. So we started to develop this uh, white noise generator like a while ago. Um, so the first episode can be found on YouTube. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Alira Zhani Place. I have no idea how to pronounce the nickname, but hello. Rebel Dare, uh, Ravzar Lex, um, Toby Prime, I good Duke. Hello, hello, everyone. So uh, I'm really sorry for mispronouncing the nicknames. Uh, I'm not really good at pronouncing names. So the first episode of this thing can be found in here. So this is a white noise generator in C. And I'm going to put the link to this thing in the description. Description. Right, so for uh, for people who's watching live, uh, you can find this thing in here. Uh, so, um, so how should I uh, how should I call it? Okay, so uh, first, um, let's put it this way: white noise generator generator in C episode uh, zero one. Um, okay. So by the way, uh, is this stream okay? Is the stream fine? Is the quality fine? Do we drop any frames or anything like that? Because lately I tried to stream like two times for CD and it always been dropping frames and stuff like that. And it's been uh, dropping a little bit of frames at the beginning as well. Hopefully that is fixed somehow magically. So uh, stream seems to be fine. Okay, thanks everyone. Okay, okay. So, um, all right, so this is where we started the development and you can find the source code of this white noise generator in here on GitLab. Right, so I'm gonna put the source code in here. Source code of the white noise generator right so this is going to be here so let's take a look at the place where we uh stopped right and let's take um take the source code and continue development uh all right so i think i need to fetch the latest changes so let me do git fetch prune origin mm -mm -mm. G, hello 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 um okay so let me merge origin uh, master. Uh, there we go. So, and let's build this thing. Lazy008 uh, subscribed. Uh, hello, thank you. Thank you so much for two months of uh, Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to Epic C Club. Uh, cheers, by the way. Mm. So, um, be super careful with this application because we're generating like. Um, raw sound and if uh you if we make any mistakes while doing that we can generate like huge spikes that may uh, damage your hearing so i'm gonna be extra cautious today uh cautious this is how i pronounce this word i believe uh so i'm gonna actually turn down the desktop audio uh to zero and i'm not gonna wear my hats uh, headphones on uh b because like first i want to hear how it sounds well, like while being like that and then uh, when i hear that it's safe, I'm going to actually put them on. Okay, so uh, I rebuild everything. Let's actually start. Okay, I can hear that it's generating things. Um, all right, so I'm going to slowly turn up the desktop volume, uh, desktop sound. You should be able to hear that as well. Right. So, and in the previous stream, we actually uh, developed a little like slider that lets you control um, sort of control the um, the frequency of the white noise, right? It lets you control the frequency of white noise. It doesn't do anything special. What it does, it just spreads the randomly generated noise, right? So, and uh, you can hear it being like this. So this, this is uh, us trying to actually reduce the frequency of the white noise, right? If you go to the left, it actually increases the frequency. And this is basically the raw generated uh, noise. 
Right. So this is basically what we developed so far. It doesn't sound great. Uh, it doesn't sound great. Uh, but uh, this is something that we're going to work on today, hopefully. Uh, we'll see. So I actually created a couple of to-dos, uh, just planned a couple of things to work on. And I think we're going to just, you know, go through the most important ones and just knock them off. Uh, all right, so let me see. Uh, so by the way, recently uh, I developed a pretty cool feature in Snitch, uh, which allows me to actually sort uh, everything by urgency, right? So as you can see here, I have the most urgent uh, to do, right? And it's at the top. Uh, and well, I mean, they're already kind of sorted uh, by the urgency, but if I put this thing like down there, uh, it's still gonna be at the top, right? So this thing still appears at the top. Uh, right, and we developed that on one of the previous uh, sorting sessions. I um, th think you can find it on the YouTube channel. I uh, think you can find it on the YouTube channel if you're interested in this kind of stuff. So I developed that feature for Snitch in the like the latest video, literally the latest one. Uh, right, you can find it in here. So, and I'm going to put that in the description for people who's watching on YouTube, right? So, um, what should I put that? Uh, urgency sorting for Snitch. And for those who doesn't know, Snitch is a tool that basically collects to do in the, in the project. And you can find that tool uh, in here on GitHub, I suppose, right? Coffee bef uh, before code. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Thank you so much for tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic uh, C club. Uh, all right, so we can find the source code in here. And uh, so I'm going to put the source code uh, of Snitch uh, in here. Right. Mm, there we go. So if you are, in fact, interested in this kind of stuff. So the first to do I want to work on is I want to add some sliders for the volume, right? Uh, so we already have a slider for the frequency, right? But I want to have more knobs I can control uh, so I can just like, you know, uh, customize the, uh, the white noise to my liking. So and one of the interesting things is that uh, slider right now is very much hard coded, right? We're not using any UI libraries or anything like that. Uh, what we're doing essentially, we just hard coded this like uh, UI element. And by adding another parameter that you can control like volume by adding another slider will be forced to abstract the slider out so we can reuse it for uh, other uh, other things right because in the future I actually plan to have to have like a lot of these sliders and I want this slider to be a reusable component right so this is basically the exercise to, for me to force and you know uh, factor it out right we'll see how it will go uh, first of all, I think I need to have volume as a parameter, right? Uh, I need to have a volume as a parameter uh, because this slider, right? What this slider does, it actually controls the step time within the generator, right? If I'm not mistaken, I think that's what it does. It contr uh, controls the step, uh, step time. Uh, and uh, that means that we need to introduce another parameter. We need to introduce the volume, right? Uh, so let's actually make the volume a value from 0 to 1, uh, right, and basically multiply the actual value by that thing, and then create another slider that will control that volume. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. So um, let me quickly see, let me quickly see. So for now, when I create the new generator, where do I create the new generator? I do that some way here. Uh, right, here it is. So first I set up the time and then I zero out the rest of the parameters. If, if I take the volume right now and start multiplying value by that volume, I think we're not going to hear anything, right? So I think we're not going to hear anything. So uh, this is the final stream and essentially what I can do, I can just go ahead and just do again uh, volume, not value, but rather volume. Right. So here's the volume. And let me recompile everything. Uh, so this is going to be build.sh. And then if I start uh, the uh, white noise generator, we can't hear anything. Right. So I can confirm 
that there is no sound in here. No matter how much I like drag this thing around, there is no sound in here because the initial value of volume is zero. So that means we'll have to initialize that. Uh, so in here we'll have to set volume equal to 1f and that's basically will correspond to the maximum volume to the like original uh, sound. Right, and now uh, can we hear anything? I don't think we can hear anything because if I go to rebuild the entire application. Right, let me quickly do that. And we can hear the uh, the noise in here. There we go. So we can clearly hear it. Can we hear that? Is it is it hearable on the stream? I think it is. Okay. So, and uh, the only thing that is left in here is to actually hook the volume up into the... Um, into some sort of a slider, right? <clears throat> so let me see how we can do that. So here we have a couple of like magical constants for the slider, right? So this is the position of the slider, this is the length of the slider, uh, this is the thickness of the slider, even though I'm not sure what that means, right? So what is the thickness of the slider? I think the thickness of the slider is literally the, um, the, the thickness of the line, right? So uh, let's take a look. I think we can control that. It's like literally the thickness of this line. Uh, if I increase uh, that thickness, right, for example, make it like 10, it's going to be twice as thick. Yeah, it is in fact twice as thick. So I didn't think I want to be able to customize this um, uh, parameter across several sliders. The only thing I want to be able to customize is the position of the slider and the length of the slider. The thickness can be shared between several sliders. Uh, so the slider color, uh, right, the red one, I, I don't think it need to be customized between several sliders, so maybe it's fine. The grip size, the grip size is the size of that knob. Uh, if I increase this thing, uh, the knob will appear a little bit bigger, right? So uh, that makes sense. This is something that could be also shared between several, uh, several sliders. So the only thing we want to customize is these three parameters. So we want to sort of unhard code them. Uh, we wanna unhard code them. Uh, so uh, let me let me think. So I wanna make it sort of uh, like um, like a function, right? So this is gonna be slider, and we're going to have uh, x, uh, y, and the length, right? So here you're gonna do x, y, and length, and uh, this thing is gonna draw you the slider, right? So first I'm gonna actually move this entire thing above the slider function, right? So it's gonna be somewhere here. Uh, and I'm gonna force myself, uh, force the compiler to complain by commenting out these things, right? So let's take a look at the rest of the stuff. Uh, so this is the slider body, we'll definitely need that, and the slider grip. So I guess that is basically it, right? So this is essentially it. I'm gonna put it in here and I'm gonna try to compile it and see where the compiler complains so we can go around and just factor it out and stuff like that. Um, so wait, what actually doing this slider? It is not a volume. No, it is not a volume. It's the frequency of the noise. Uh, I can show you one more time. Uh, all right, so if you care, if you listen carefully, uh, maybe I'm gonna actually turn on the music, turn off the music, I'm sorry. It doesn't become louder or quieter, it becomes different. So it makes it low, if that makes any sense. Right, this is not a volume. But what I want to do, I want to add the volume. So we're going to have two sliders. One controls the uh, the frequency, sort of. It's not really frequency, but it's basically how much the uh, random samples are spread across the timeline, uh, which kind of emulates like lowering the frequency. And another knob is going to be basically the volume. Right, in the future, as we develop this generator, we're going to have more and more parameters. So, uh, and because of that, I need reusable sort of UI components that we can just like slap around. Um, mm, it sounds like 8-bit, and it sounds like 8-bit because it's a saw wave, right? So uh, let me let me show you. Mm, this is actually a very interesting observation. It, it's actually a correct observation. It does sound very 
pixelated because it doesn't really have a good resolution. Uh, so we're going to get into that a little bit later. So the way it works, essentially, is that uh, we have a timeline, right? So here's the timeline, and this is the volume of the, uh, the value of the wave, right? So essentially, across the timeline, we're generating random points like that, right? So we're just generating random points, and we're connecting them as a saw wave, saw tooth wave. I think this is how it's called. Uh, so saw uh, tooth wave. Uh, so we're not doing any good job on interpolating between these point, points at all, right? And what's interesting is that we lower the frequency by just basically increasing the distance between these two points, right? So between the samples, uh, right? So if we do something like this, uh, and uh, here we have something like that, and maybe I can even take some sort of an eraser and emulate like sort of like these dashed uh, lines, right? We increase the frequency by basically in increasing the distance between these things. And the more we increase the distance, the more pixelated it sounds. So that's the reason it sounds like that, right? In the future, we'll think how we can like interpolate this kind of stuff a little bit better, maybe make it a little bit smoother, uh, right? And see how that will affect. And I also have a couple of uh, other ideas to make it more interesting. Maybe we're going to have like sub frequencies. So here is one random frequency. And maybe here we're going to have like sub frequency like this, uh, making it even more random. And maybe you would be able to control the main frequency and then sub frequency deciding like what you want to hear we're gonna have a lot of interesting parameters in here like trust me uh, i have a lot of different ideas on uh, on this generator uh so it's a triangle wave well, it doesn't matter it sounds pixelated anyway uh so let's not get uh you know wind up about the specific names they don't really change the reality names are just labels that we slap on top of reality mm -mm -mm. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, now, so do we have any music uh, to to do to? to. <clears throat> All right, let's go back uh, to, to. So I created the volume, right? So here's the volume, and now I want to try to compile this entire thing and just go to the compilation errors. Uh, right. So the first thing we have, uh, the slider cannot draw itself without any renderer. Okay, so let's actually do something like slider renderer, uh, renderer, uh, and it's going to be the point uh, renderer. There we go. Interestingly enough, interestingly enough, I think I need to call the slider function in here. Uh, slider. Let me do it like that. Uh, right. And in here, I'm going to provide the render and then the position. So do I want to have this constants in here? I, I think I'm going to just like put the values of this constants in here uh, and remove the constants because we don't really have that many magical constants in here to actually justify having these things in here. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. So this is the slider essentially. Right, what else do we need in here? Uh, time slider x okay so here is the position so i need to assign x to here uh, right and y to here so we also use the thickness thickness is a global parameter in here so everything's fine uh okay so what's going to be the next thing the length is this one um okay so gain step time. All right, this one is rather interesting. So this is the current value, right? So this is the current value. And uh, the actual grip like position is determined by the current value and the minimum and maximum. So that means that these three things has to be customizable. So they have to be the uh, parameters of this function. I'm pretty sure. So let's actually go ahead and do that. Uh, so let's uh, introduce something like float value. So this is the current value, then max and mean. Uh, 
I think it has to be the other way around, right? So usually min goes first and max goes the second. So, and this is what we're gonna use in here. So we're gonna put max in here and min in here. So we're kind of making a very interesting assumption in here, right? So we're assuming that min is less or equal than max, right? I think it's quite important to, uh, to assert that just in case. Um, so, and this thing becomes essentially the value, right? So basically like lurping, like inverse lurping in here, I think. I think this is literally what we're doing in here. We're sort of inverse lorping this thing. This thing. Uh, and I wonder if I can uh, use ilerp uh, right. I should be able to use ilerp. Yeah, I can. So I can just do something like ilerp uh, and then I can provide minimum and maximum and the current value. And that will give me a value from zero to uh, from 0 to 1, which I can multiply the length by, right? So, yeah, I, I created like the lerp and i lerp, but I never actually used it anywhere, so which is kind of kind of a shame, uh, right? I used it in some places, but not everywhere. Um, all right, so let me let me see. So let's take a look at the rest of the compilation errors. Uh, slider length. Okay, so the length has to be something like this. All, right, all of that becomes customizable. Uh, so this is the position. So let's quickly do that. Um, <laughs> so drag. Okay, this one is rather interesting. So this is sort of the state of the slider, right? It indicates that we're currently dragging that uh, that slider, right? So, which doesn't really work when you start to have several sliders. So instead of like this Boolean thing, you will have to have some sort of a global variable that holds the ID of the currently dragging slider. Right, but um, let's actually put that away for a little bit and uh, just make this code compile first, right? I wanna make this separate function compile first and then we can see how we can call, uh, you know, slider function twice, uh, right? So to be able to actually use this function, I think for a while we need to make dragging grip a global variable, uh, right? So I'm gonna put it as a global variable. There we go. And uh, that basically indicates that you're currently, um, you know, dragging the slider. Mm, all right, so what we're gonna have in here. So this is basically X. This is basically X. I know that it's absolutely outrageous that I'm using global variables, right? I know that your uh, CS professor probably told you that you're not supposed to use global variables and that uh, if you use global variables, you're gonna be expelled from uni for, and you know, the entire industry is gonna be closed for you for the rest of your life. But trust me, this is not true. I've been in the industry for like 15 years and I've been using global variables, um, you know, pretty much every day, pretty much every day. And uh, as you can see where I end up, I end up without any job. So <laughs> maybe you should not listen uh, to, to random strangers on the internet. Anyway, so uh, we're gonna use global variables whether you want it or not. Uh, so here, okay, and this one is rather interesting, right? So we need to sort of return information about the current value of the slider, right? So that's what we need to be able to do. Uh, here, uh, we essentially just assign it, but we can't assign it. So what I wanna do is basically return that value as the return value of the function. So look, you wanna do, uh, you wanna render a slider, you provide the position and the length of the slider, you provide the current value of the slider and suppose it minimum and maximum. And then uh, through calculation of a single frame, it will tell you what's the current new value of the slider. You see? So it will look at the current uh, state of the mouse, uh, the current state of the mouse buttons, and will figure out that you're actually dragging and stuff like that. And it will return you the, the new value that you can assign back to whatever variable you're like holding or something like that. Or maybe we could actually take the value by a reference, uh, right? Why not? And just do it like that. Who knows? Could be also, I think. Mm. Mm, it actually depends on what exactly we want to do. I think for now I'm gonna actually like uh, pass it as a uh, as a pointer because I think it's it's pretty cool. So slider basically modifies that value for you. Right, I think that's pretty cool. 
Uh, all right, so uh, let me let me see. So here we'll have to dereference that value. So and in here uh, we're gonna assign a new value, right? If the value was modified, we're gonna assign a new value. So in here, uh, essentially, uh, we call this thing. We provide the slider, then we provide the position and length, and then we have to provide the. Um, the value, the pointer, the pointer to the variable that stores the the value, the pointer to the variable that stores the value. Hopefully, I pronounced that correctly. Uh, so again, uh, something like step uh, step time. So this is the pointer. The minimum. I forgot what was the minimum and what was the maximum because I think I straight up removed that thing. Uh, so the question is. Uh, min and max. So this is a step time min. Uh, okay, so I can just use that. Step uh, is going to be 1 and this is going to be 200 and I think I need to actually remove this entire thing. Uh, Alright, so if I try to recompile this entire thing, so this thing will complain and it means I have to assign it like this. Uh, there we go. So, and we finally managed to compile that. Alright. So, uh, let me try to run the wine, and does it produce any sound? I think it does in fact produce sounds. Mm. And it doesn't work, nice, I really uh, like that. So basically it's assigned uh, a zero to the, maybe not zero, but basically one to the final value for some reason, I'm not really sure why. Uh, so, min and max, where did I make a mistake? Where did I make a mistake? That's really, really strange. So, uh, let me, let me see. So, if I go in here... Um, mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, dragon falls, dragon true. Uh, so let me try to maybe print the value just in case, right? So we're going to do it something like this. Uh, this is going to be F and this is going to be the value, right? So we're going to do it like that. Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh, so let me rebuild the entire thing. So this is going to be build. Um, all right, and if I try to touch that, it sets that thing to one. But the question is, why does it set it to one? I'm not quite sure. Uh, so there's a grip size, grip minimum, um, min and max. It feels like I need to debug that, right? Because it's not um, immediately obvious what the hell is going on. So let's go ahead and debug this entire thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and debug this entire thing. So this is going to be wine uh, and I'm going to break uh, main.c122. Okay, so we're going to run this entire thing uh, and it produces this thing and now it actually broken here. So let's take a look at the current state. Uh, so if I print x, x seems to be all right. Uh, next, uh, grip, grip minimum uh it's two one one uh it's basically well I, I i think it makes sense uh next one is gonna be this one grip uh max grip max uh and it's this one okay so we have a grip minimum and grip maximum in terms of like x uh right so if i do the next so i have xf which is like it's clamping that thing uh, it's clamping that thing to what? Was it actually... Did we actually need to clamp this stuff? Uh, because this thing is the minimum and it stays the minimum. This is a really strange code. I'm not really sure what the hell is going on here. So why... So this is the position. In terms of X, hmm, I think there is a little bit of a confusion. I see. Okay, so there is a confusion between X and Y and why the compiler actually never told me anything. Uh, why it never said that you're shadowing some stuff in here. 
where is the okay this is probably because i forgot to put extra extra stuff in here right and it never still complains about that what the fuck excuse me holy shit this is right so we're shadowing shit in here and apparently it is totally fine um so you have to enable shadowing explicitly this is so disgusting oh my god like the this is very important because i rely on this kind of stuff for effect okay thank you so much Gia. like holy shit um i just like blindly rely on as many warnings as possible for refactoring and the most important one was not on even when i did w all and w extra oh this is so annoying anyway so <laughs> right so like for me it is very important that the compilers makes as many checks as possible otherwise it's impossible to refactor anything um Mm, 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 mm. okay so let me see so now it says that it shadows uh so we probably need to rename this thing to slider x and slider uh y um okay so let's go ahead and do that uh so this is going to be slider x slider y uh to two, two, two maybe i could just call it position right so it's 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 more of a position x and position y so let's call it like this i think uh right okay um so it's gonna be the next thing so this is the position another position situation uh all right uh, 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 uh. so and then we have x and y and this is the mouse position so if i understand everything correctly hopefully this is just a mouse but it could i could be wrong uh yeah i think i'm wrong so the minimum has to be the slider x right that thing has to be the slider x uh it's a position x there we go uh so that kind of makes sense uh all right so if i try to run wine now uh, it produces the sound and it works correctly okay that is that is good that is very very good i really really like that okay so let me actually listen uh let me actually listen so everything seems to be fine cool uh so how can we add more sliders in here how can we add more sliders that's a good question uh to do two so here is the problem right so these things right they basically share dragging grip they basically share dragging grip and i'm thinking uh, can i just make dragging grip another pointer to the slider right can i just do that is that like something feasible Mm, and then if I'm going to have the second slider, uh, I'm going to simply uh, I'm going to si simply provide the pointer to another boolean. I think it's not going to really work well. I don't think it's a very good idea. So, but I want to try that anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and just uh, provide the pointer to the boolean in here. So it's going to be called dragging. Uh, right, and I'm going to just remove this entire thing. So uh, let's go to the compilation errors. So this one is going to be something like this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So dragging becomes true. Uh, otherwise it becomes false. And then here I have to provide the dragging. Uh, so let's put it this way. Dragging um, frequency, I suppose, right? dragon frequency i think that makes sense so this one is going to be something like this initially is going to be false uh i just want to see if this approach scales at all uh all right so we have something in here okay so if i want to just introduce a volume can i now just do the following thing dragging volume uh right initially it's false uh, then I'm going to create a slider, uh, right? Uh, 
its position in terms of x i think it's going to be the same in terms of y we can put it down a little bit let's actually do 200 and in terms of length uh, let's use the same length uh, for the dragging state, we're going to use dragging uh, volume and then for the actual value is going to be a value of the generator and the range, the minimum and maximum is going to be 0 and 1, right? So is it as simple as this? Right, we'll see. I'm not sure if like having the dragging boolean variable uh, a parameter is a good idea, uh, whether it's going to scale or not. I don't think it's going to scale, but we can try. Uh, okay, so this one is volume, right? So here is the volume and okay, that's very interesting. As you can see, uh, so there is a bug in the grip, right? Uh, there is a bug in the grip and it's very, very ap apparent. So let's actually go and fix that bug. Uh, so grip. So what is does it use for the position? What does it use for the position? Uh, in terms of oh yeah, here we go. So the the, the bug is very apparent. So I forgot to, to use Y in here. Uh, all right, uh, there we go. So and here we have two sliders. As you can see, now our entire thing is actually scaled. So let me try to drag this thing. It seems to be working, right? And I think it, it's even affecting things. Um, right, can I now drag the volume? I can drag the volume and I think it's affecting things. Yeah, so this is the problem I was talking about. You can, the, the way we handle things, uh, you can accidentally actually like drag two of them. So if you just like move in here, you basically capture it and yeah, so this is basically what you have. We'll have to do that immediate, uh, immediate GUI style. But yeah, so this approach more or less scalable. Uh, this approach more or less scalable. We just need to decide how we're going to be implementing the, the dragging thingy, uh, right. Uh, to, 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 to. So the way usually immediate UI works, uh, they track the um, elements by their IDs, right? They track elements by their IDs. And uh, there is some sort of a global state uh, which indicates um, what's the, you know, currently active ID. Uh, so we've got uh, a lot of gifted stuff. We have we've got 15 tier one gifted subs by A B C D A F G uh, 100 100. Thank you so much for um, and my stream has died apparently. My stream just died. Uh, I don't know what to say. Is the stream fine now? Okay, uh, so um, yeah, thank you, thank you so much for uh, for gifted subs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm really sorry for for the technical difficulties, but it just went down for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, while it's going, does anyone have any questions? Maybe. Um, so um, let's actually take a look. And two, 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 two. Is there a specific reason to use floats for sliders and positioning of elements instead of size t or something? Uh, it makes interpolation a little bit easier, right? Because uh, it makes it easy to convert the value, to normalize the value from 0 to 1. And then if you have a value from 0 to 1, it makes it super easy to map it to a different range, right? So essentially, you have... Uh, let's imagine that you have two values, right? Uh, like value 1 and value 10, right? So this is the minimum uh, and this is the maximum. And your value is something like 5, right? And then you want to map this value from range 1 to 10 to, let's say, uh, 25, 30, right? So you want to find such value that sits between 25 and 30, the same way as 5 sits between 1 and 10, re like relatively, right? Uh, 
So, and essentially what you do, you just do inverse uh, um, linear interpolation and find like a value from zero to one, basically the percentage uh, of like how much five is between uh, one and 10. And then you multiply uh, like 30 minus 20, uh, 25 by that value and you get the same like mapping between these values. It just makes the linear interpolations easier, if that makes any sense. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd explain it well, but that's the reason why in computer graphics and, you know, stuff like that, people use floats because it makes the linear interpolation easier, right? Because you can convert values, ranges to zero, one, which is super easy to map to any range because you can just multiply that value by that range. Um, mm. By the way, this is why globals are bad. Yeah, 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 globals are bad. I should be ashamed. I'm a disgrace of the industry. Ah, I know, I know. I hear that every day. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your opinion. Uh, so, does anyone have any other questions? Maybe. Uh, can you make draggable bool so it stays false until you, until you drag slider? I have a better idea, actually. The problem that we're dealing with is already solved one, and it's solved in immediate UI. If you ever, uh, if you never heard about immediate UI, I really recommend to check it out. Uh, it's a concept uh, coined by Casey Moratori. Uh, immediate UI, immediate mode GUI. Uh, so, and essentially the way it's solved there is by keeping track of the IDs of the, of the elements. I'm gonna, uh, you know, provide the link in the chat. Uh, and uh, so maybe I'm gonna put this thing in the description as well. Uh, all right, so where is my description? Uh, okay, immediate. UI, immediate mode GUI. So the most famous implementation of immediate, uh, you know, UI, immediate mode GUI is probably IM GUI, right? It's the famous implementation of this thing. But I don't know, I'm not really sure if it makes sense to take a concept and implement a library for that concept, right? Because immediate UI is just a concept, right? So it's sort of an approach. Uh, I'm not sure if wrapping that approach into a library actually helps anyone because that approach has to be adapted for a specific application, right? And uh, yeah, anyway, so I, I'm going to provide the link to the description in the description for this thing as well. Uh, I am GUI, right? Uh, from what I heard about immediate mode GUI is basically it's an approach that you basically adapt for your game or adapt for your application. It's kind of difficult to condense it into a library that you can just slap into your project and instantly you have a UI. No, it's just like it's more of a concept approach um, rather than like, like a paradigm. Um, so I don't know. Uh, so and uh, yeah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And uh, how are we going to do all of that? Uh, so we have dragging, we have like a value. And we need to provide the ID somehow. So usually um, we have a notion of an active, uh, active ID, right? So let's actually put it like this. Uh, active uh, widget, active widget. So we're going to indicate that the widget is inactive by doing minus one, right? Uh, so, and I'm going to provide the, uh, so let's actually call it active ID, right? And in here, uh, I'm going to put it like this, like this. All right. So, and this is where we provide the ID. Cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So minus one means that nobody is currently active, right? And when you are active, when you're currently dragging, uh, you're going to have your ID in there, right? You're going to have your ID. So not dragging means that uh, there is no any active ID as of right now, right? So let me actually see. 
So we have two situations when uh, somebody is active and when nobody is active. Uh, less than zero, nobody is active. We take the current cursor, right? We take the current cursor and then we check uh, whether we are inside of that button, uh, inside of the grip, and the button is in fact down. Ooh, this one is rather interesting. Um, is it going to solve this thing? Usually in a classical immediate UI, you have you keep track of two IDs, right? You have like a hot ID and you have an active ID. And hot ID is an ID of a widget you are about to interact with, right? If nobody is active, right? Nobody is active and you basically move your cursor inside of the grip, but you don't click yet, you become hot. And by being hot, you can essentially highlight yourself or something like that. And then if you are hot and you click the thing, you become active, right? So you basically go through like two, uh, three stages. The first stage is completely inactive, then hot, and then uh, active, right? Something like that. And I always wondered, can you get rid of the hot stage? Uh, right. So because I, I find it like two stage and two variable tracking kind of like difficult to wrap my head around. So I always thought, can I just like have only active? Uh, hot is mouse over. Yeah, hot is, hot is basically mouse over. Uh, but it's kind of interesting that it's usually tracked by literally like two variables. You you would have like literally two variables in here, uh, right? Not a single one, which is enumeration or something like that, but literally two variables. Um, so maybe like in languages like Rust, you could just use enumeration, right? Something like enum, uh, something like state, uh, and in here you would have some something like none, hot, ID and then active. Uh, this one has to be like integer i32 and active i32. And basically you would scroll through several phases or something like that. Can you be active but not hot? I think you can. Yeah. So that's probably why you need the several variables. Yeah. Essentially, you can be active but not hot when you're already dragging the thing, but you actually went outside of the grip. So, yeah, that's actually a very good point. Uh, so that's probably why you need two variables. Uh, let's actually uh, let me stash uh, this entire thing because it's not compiling right now. So, yeah, I'm currently active, but I moved my mouse outside of the grip. So the element is not hot. It's not highlighted, but it is in fact active. So that's probably why. Right. And when you mouse over it, it becomes hot and active. Okay, so that kind of makes sense, I guess. Uh, so this is like a usual uh, terminology of immediate UI. So actually, Casey Moratori explained that terminology in one of his talks. Um, so two, 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 on YouTube. Now let me find it. Immediate. UI KC. Oh my god, it's so slow. Eh. Uh, yeah, there we go. So, this is a very old. I You can even find my video in there. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So, here is the video. Uh, as far as I know, KC, like it's a very old video. KC said that it's not really, you know, explaining the concept really well. Uh, as of today, so I don't know if it makes sense to watch it, but I personally learned a lot from that video. Um, immediate mode GUI by Casey Moratori. So I'm gonna put it in here. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, let me. Let me see, let me see. So we're currently, I, I'm going to try to see if I can like uh, get rid of the hot right now because I don't really want to do mouse over uh, situation. I just don't, don't want to deal with that. Uh, okay, so nobody is active, right? Nobody is active and um, uh, we're currently inside of the grip and um, we pressed the um, the mask, right? If we did that, what we're going to do, um, I need to actually restore my thing that I stashed. Uh, I need to revert this entire stuff. We're going to assign ourselves to the active one, right? So we essentially became active. Uh, so if 
somebody is active we have two situation uh, who is active it's is it us or is it somebody else i think we should only care if it's actually us All right so if this thing is equal to id uh right and uh the button was unpressed I suppose we have to release ourselves, right? So the active ID should become minus one. Okay, it's not active anymore. Uh, so, but if we are active and we're still hold, holding the left, uh, the left button, uh, that means we have to keep updating the value. Mm, 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 mm. Even cooler, this bug repeats in sub web compilers. What bug? What bug are you talking about? I'm not sure what bug are you talking about. Uh, all right, so let me see. So the, uh, here we'll have to provide the ID. So uh, let me let me see. So for this one, I suppose I'm going to provide the ID zero, and for this one, it's going to provide the ID one. So we can just basically preallocate some like IDs uh, for those things. Uh, let me see. Oh, I have an idea, actually. I have a pretty cool idea. I can create enumeration. Uh, type def num slider. Right, and uh, we're going to have a slider frequency, which is initially zero. And slider volume. Uh, volume. Uh, and furthermore, I have even cooler idea. We can have the count of sliders. How many sliders do we have? Uh, right. So, and in here, essentially, I, I can basically hard code these things. I can say slider frequency uh, and then slider volume, uh, right? Um, so I'm going to reveal the reason why I want to have count sliders a little bit later. So let's actually put it away right now. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let me try to run this thing. So we have unused variables in here. So let's remove them. Okay, so everything seems to be working, and let me see. Okay, so the frequency is working. I'm not sure if you can hear that. You, can, you can't hear that. You can hear it now. Frequency is working. Volume. Volume is working. Now, can I actually drag, drag two sliders simultaneously? I cannot. The bug was fixed. Right, so I have to unpress, and I didn't even have to introduce the hot uh, ID right now. Right, we may introduce the hot stage for the uh, for the elements a little bit later, but not right now. Right. Okay. So why did I introduce count sliders? Well, that actually allows me to automatically uh, do some layouting in here. So you see here, I lay out the sliders uh, manually. But since I know how many sliders I have, I can actually put them in a loop, right? So something like size, actually let's put like this slider, uh, slider ID uh, is going to be initially zero and then slider ID less than count sliders, uh, count, uh, there we go. So this is going to be slider ID. And essentially here, we have a loop that doesn't know anything about specific sliders, right? It just iterates through all of the known sliders and just uh, supplies IDs uh, to this entire thing in here. Uh, and then uh, we can just use the slider ID as sort of like a multiplier, right? So here is the initial Y, and then I can say uh, slider ID plus slider ID multiplied by uh, 100 and if in the future i add more sliders in here so volume like frequency volume and maybe like a sub frequency of some sort i won't have to even touch this code right so it will automatically just add another slider so it allows me to automatically do the layouting right it will lay them out vertically uh something like that there is one problem in here is and the problem is that we have to provide the pointer to this thing and i have no idea how to solve it yet. Uh, we'll have to think about that. Um, mm, 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 mm. So one of the things we can do, we can probably, um, uh, we can probably have some sort of a table uh, with the pointers to the value, right? So we can have a table with the pointers to the value, like something like static one or whatnot. Uh, so generator is here, right? So the generator is here. 
Uh, generator is here. <laughs> so I'm just thinking, what's the best way to do that? What's the best way to do that? I can just have a set to the to the thing. Uh, mm -mm. And I kind of want a cup of tea. So I kind of really want a cup of tea. Uh, but before we can have a cup of tea, we have to solve this problem first. All right, anyway. So uh, I'm going to provide the, the following thing. So this is going to be a uh, pointer to the float. And uh, we're going to have... Um, how should I call that? Uh, fields, right? Um, I, I really lack a good name for that thing, unfortunately. Anyway, uh, so and in here we're gonna have like a count slider amount of fields, right? Uh, and uh, basically what we're gonna do in here is just like a slider frequency uh, should be equal to the pointer to gain uh, step time, right? And then slider volume uh, should be equal to gain volume. There we go. So we have like a table of these, um, you know, uh, of these pointers and then we can just go ahead and uh, use fields uh, slider id right so that's what we can do that's what we can essentially do was it worth it i have no idea probably not uh, so my goal is when i add a new slider in here this entire thing should not compile until i fixed all of the places that needs to be fixed so it would be nice to have some sort of like a static assert in here uh right uh that basically checks that count sliders is to uh exhaustive um definition of uh slider fields something like that uh, all right, so and if I try to do that thing, so it does not even compile because why? Uh, to do to, I forgot a semicolon. There we go. I forgot a semicolon. And is it working? Uh, it's not really working properly, by the way. Okay, so that was uh, this is basically what I was talking about. Uh, right, so. <laughs> Be super careful when you work with like a row generated uh, sound. Be super careful. Oh boy. Uh, so why it didn't work the way it's supposed to work? It's kind of strange. It is in fact kind of strange. I really apologize if it was too loud. Uh, right. Uh, I didn't mean that uh, thing to be uh, very, very loud. I really apologize for that. So I should have been a little bit more careful. Um, that is very, very strange, right? So I didn't do anything special, right? So I just put that field and like on the surface, the code looks fine. Uh, again, the min and max needs to be, ah, yeah. So essentially, yeah, okay. So you need to uh, keep track of uh, other things in here. So feels like it was actually kind of cool idea to have this like account sliders thingy, but it feels like it's not worth it, right? Because you have to like keep the definition somewhere. So let's actually scratch that idea. Uh, let's actually scratch this idea completely. Uh, but we're gonna keep the enumeration, right? Because the enumeration provides the IDs. Uh, so we're gonna use that. Uh, all right, so the first one is going to be, so this, this slider ID is gonna be slider uh, frequency, right? Um, slider frequency. Uh, so slider frequency and uh, then what's again step time step time there we go so this is gonna be that and that is fine Emacs what are you doing okay so I'm gonna put it in here and the other one is gonna be the value so this is just 100 at some point we're gonna have some sort of automatic layouting but not right now right I don't think we have enough code base developed for like automatically outing uh, volume. This one has to be zero and this one has to be one. Okay, cool. So that should be fine, uh, right? So hopefully slider volume. I keep actually misspelling value and volume. Okay. Cool. All right. That seems to be safe. All right, 
So the to do has been officially done, right? So the official to, uh, the to do was add sliders for volumes uh, for volume, and we did that, right? And as I already mentioned, that sort of forced me to extract the slider component out, and now we have reusable sliders, and uh, yeah, we can use them in the future for more parameters, right? So the, we um, basically achieved reusable code, which is kind of paug, not gonna lie. Right, so let me quickly do a committee committee uh, and maybe even a push a push um, So let me actually remove that. Add sliders for volume. Uh, right, so I'm going to do that. All right, cool. Mm -hmm -hmm. Add sliders for volume. Uh, there we go, I'm going to push that right into the repo. You can find the source code of this thing in the description if you're interested. Or if you're watching live, you can find that in the chat. I'm going to, uh, you know, send that thing in the chat. Uh, Chaos Dravi, uh, thank you so much for two months. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm really glad that you caught me live as well. Uh, internet is kind of fixed, but it kind of feels like maybe something wrong is Twitch. Um, I don't even know. Uh, right, so Twitch has an interesting feature. It allows you to test the bandwidth without actually streaming. So you add a special prefix to your key, to your streaming key, you start streaming, and it doesn't really start the stream, but it, uh, the OBS shows you the connection. So I had a weird situation when I do the bandwidth test, and it's perfectly fine. I remove the bandwidth test and I start streaming and it's dropping frames. And I go back to the bandwidth test and it's fine. So, which kind of suggests me that it's kind of a Twitch problem, probably. I don't know, because it's really, really sus. When I'm testing the bandwidth, everything's fine. No frames are dropped. Actually streaming, dropping frames. I don't know. That was weird. Uh, that was a really, really weird. So anyway, uh, what I want to do, I want to make a small break because I want to brew a cup of tea. And after we brew the cup of tea, we're going to continue working on this thing. So the the next feature I want to actually implement is visualize a small section of the white, no uh, white noise sound wave. So essentially what I want to have, what I want to have, Chad. Uh, so we have a lot of space in here. So I want to basically generate a small section of that wave. Right, very small section, so we can see the general shape of the wave, right? And uh, when I tweak any of these parameters, I want it to interactively change, right? When I decrease the frequency, I want this wave to spread. When I decrease the volume, I want it to shrink. I want to actually see how these knobs affect these parameters. And the reason why I want to see that is because, like, actually seeing the wave will give us idea on how to improve the quality of the wave, right? Because in the future, I actually plan to interpolate the things. So, and when I'm interpolating things, I want to see if I'm interpolating it in the right sort of direction. Because if I interpolate incorrectly, I may have like a weird like tooth things, right? So I want everything you know, to be smooth and I want to actually see that. Uh, so uh, yeah, and uh, this is basically what we're going to implement next. And after we have that, we can try to experiment with like actual uh, things with the actual wave generator and the visualization is going to help us to see what's actually going on. Uh, right. All right. So anyway, let's make a small break. Uh, thank you so much, Mkala, for two months of tier one subscription. Thank you so much for two months of tier one subscription and welcome to our Epic C Club. Uh, all right. So let's make a small break and... Um... Okay. So... To visualize a small section of the white noise, uh, we need to solve a very interesting problem because we're generating the wave randomly, right? So that means uh, we cannot just like do that on each frame, right? We cannot just like ran like use the same generator and randomly generate on each frame because this thing is going to go all over the place, right? So essentially we need some sort of like a reproducible random number generator so we can basically on each frame uh, we can reset the state of the random number generator and pre-generate the um, the entire thing, uh, the the chunk of the wave, and then restore the state so we can continue uh, generating the sound, right? So essentially what I want to do, I want to use the same generator for generating the visuals and for generating the sound, right? 
And because of that, I need to be able to sort of like a, a snapshot the current state of the random number generator, uh, just set it to a particular state and return back to where it was so the sound can continue generating. So that's what we need to be able to do. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if you can do that with the standard C random number generator, right? So you can kind of set the initial state of the standard C random number generator by using srand, right? So you can specify the seed uh, and but we have no way to sort of take a snapshot of the current state of the random number generator and then restore it with srand, do we? I didn't think so, right? I don't think we have a way to do that. We can only have a way to set the initial state, but taking the current state and restoring it, it's like not really supported by that random number generator. So maybe one of the things, the first things we'll have to do is to write our own one. People say rand underscore r. I don't really know anything about that. So let's actually take a look. Rand underscore r. So, uh, all right. So that sounds interesting. Uh, so what does it do? I only used rand and s rand. I never used rand underscore r. So rand underscore r returns a pseudo random integer in the range 0x. The seed p argument is appointed to an unsigned integer that is used to store state between the calls. Okay. Uh, it is the call with the same initial value for the integer by seed p. Well, so basically it offloads its state into this variable. Okay. That's actually pretty cool. I really like that. Uh, so this is precisely what I needed, I think. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, R. Sacheta, for, uh, for suggesting this thing. So I actually want to kind of test it. I kind of want to test it. Uh, so uh, Kazagan asks, uh, hello, how do I get a Discord privileges? OK, so you already subscribe. That means you, uh, you should get them automatically when you connect your Discord account and your Twitch account, right? So Google up Discord connect Twitch, right? Uh, so how to connect Discord to a Twitch? Well, not really that. What's going to discuss? Oh my God, this is so bad. Uh, and none of them are official Discord things. Okay, Twitch integration FAQ. Okay, so th this is probably the one. This is so bad. Google, when did Google became so bad? Uh, anyway, so yeah, Twitch integration uh, is here. You can now you can do Discord server, but I want to do that for the user. So yeah, it's, it's somewhere in your settings, right? So I don't know, like Google is so bad. Go to the Discord server connection. Yeah, so you probably want to do this thing, I suppose. And it's just like random websites that have nothing to do with the Discord and Discord is the second one. Oh boy. So, yeah, I completely understand you, but yeah. Um, so, essentially, what you need to do, you need to connect your Twitch account and your Discord account. All right. So, uh, let's actually test this entire thing. Uh, so, this is going to be main two, and uh, let's, let's uh, go. Uh, so I suppose what we have to do in here is set up the seed, right? So this is going to be the state of our random number generator. So this is going to be 69. And in here, I'm going to just do a couple of iterations, right? So this is going to be a couple of iterations. Uh, let's say it's going to be 10 of them. Uh, and in here, uh, I suppose what we're going to do, we're going to provide the seed P and then the value in here. Uh, so, and I wonder what we're going to do. Uh, let's actually print uh, seed P uh, right now. So this is going to be just you. Uh, seed P. Uh, seed P is equal to that. Uh, and then we're going to do print F uh, something like this. So the X is going to be equal to this. Uh, like so. Cool. So we're going to do like 10 iterations and we're going to see how the seed and the value evolves. Uh, right. And uh, let me see. So this is I. Uh -huh. Do we need anything else? Semicolons and stuff. There we go. That is very cool. So initially seed was 69 and then it continued doing this kind of stuff. All right. And one of the things I want to check, 
I want to basically reset the seat to 69, uh, right, and do this entire thing again, right, and see if it basically produces the, the same sequence, more or less, right. Does it produce the same sequence? Yeah, it does produce the same sequence. I really like that. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. So that means I can quite easily basically offload the current state, uh, set my own state uh, and produce the reproducible sequence and just return back to continue the evaluation. So this is actually quite nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is precisely what I needed. That is precisely what I needed. So that means we need to make the seed uh, a part of the generator. Right, so the seed has to become part of the generator. So unsigned integer int, and this is going to be seed p. And as we create the generator, we have to set that seed p to, like, let's say 69. So do we have srand? Uh, I don't think so. Srand. Uh, okay, we don't have anything. Um, so now, um, when I do rand, uh, when I do rand, uh, I just use that stuff. So. Uh, I can use the following thing around R uh, again seed uh, P right so again seed P uh, another round R again seed P cool uh, do we have any other rands okay everything seems to be fine mm -mm. Mm -mm. so uh, people are asking about main two okay so here's the interesting thing let me actually uh, basically build everything Quite often, within the current code base, I want to test things out, right? And while testing things out, I want to have the environment, the same environment of the program, right? I don't want to run the main program, but I still want to have these functions that are lying around, like constants or maybe other functions and stuff like that. Uh, so what I usually do, I basically command out the current entry point by renaming it to something else. Right, and create a new entry point, like so, uh, which doesn't do anything, right? It doesn't do anything, uh, right? And then I start experimenting within the current environment of application, right? So I have uh, all of the types the main application has, all of the functions the main application has, right? The same environment, but a different entry point. And once I'm done with the experimenting, uh, right, I go ahead and remove this alternative entry point and uh, return this one back. So it allows me just to toggle between like experiment, uh, experimentation mode and the main mode of the application, right? I just want you to test out the random number generator, though I didn't really need anything from the environment in here, but it was just super quick, uh, right? I want you to test the random number generator, but I didn't want to run the whole SDL application. Right? Like, I don't need the whole SDL application just to uh, print a bunch of numbers. So it was just easier to sort of comment it out and create a new main. So this is like a trick that I constantly use all the time. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Um, how long did it took you to get used to i3? I don't remember. I got used to it very long time ago. Okay. So uh, let me let me see let me see if I didn't break anything. So uh, I'm gonna start this entire thing and um, seems to be working. Okay, that is very paug. All right, and here's the volume. I can just bring it down. Cool. So and the cool thing here now is that if I want to generate a small chunk. Of the sound wave, I can just use the same function that I use uh, for generating the actual sound, right? So here is this function. It accepts the state of the random num uh, of the uh, white noise generator. It takes the uh, buffer into which it will generate the samples, and it just generates the samples and updates the state of the um, of the generator, right? So and uh, because of that, it should be super easy to like uh, update this entire thing. Though, it's kind of annoying, right? So, we should be able to just snapshot this thing and just use it over and over again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just thinking how we're going to do all of that. I'm just thinking how we're going to do all of that. I think we should start with uh, a function 
that accepts the samples that are generated by the random number generator and just draws them on the screen, right? So let's actually start with that. Uh, so let me let me go ahead and do that. So we have a slider, and this is going to be like almost uh, like one of the widgets. Uh, so wave preview. Uh, here we have the uh, the samples. Uh, we don't need a hot ID, right? So we have the samples, and uh, we also probably need SDL renderer, uh, renderer, renderer. Uh, and on top of that, I suppose we also need the position of this entire thing. Where is it going to be located or something like that? So we're going to accept position X and also position Y. Uh, whether we're going to customize the, um, the actual width, of height, width and height of this preview, I'm not sure. Um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, okay, so I also want to move these things down there. Uh, by the way, these names are kind of obsolete, right? So they're not about step time. They're more about just sliders in general. So I think I want to rename them. Uh, so this one is going to become just slider thick and slider color. So it's more of a thickness, right? Slider thickness. And this one, uh, this one is slider grip size and slider grip color, right? Uh, slider. So I want to do this kind of renames. Mm -hmm. So, and we're also going to have this kind of stuff. Um, wave preview uh, width, right? We're going to have a specific width, which is going to be like 100. Uh, and uh, preview height which I think is going to be th around 300. We'll see. Uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so, and this is basically what we need to generate in here. Um, wave uh, to do, uh, wave preview. Preview is not implemented yet. There we go. Uh, cool. Uh, to do two. So, and I kind of want to render all of that somewhere here. So wave preview, let's, let's actually take this entire thing and let's put it in here. So this is a wave preview and uh, the position of the preview is going to be around at the same place, like 100, uh, but somewhere down below actually 300, right? Uh, so, and here we have to have something like a preview stream and preview... Uh, preview stream length. And the question is, how are we going to be generating that? How are we going to be generate, generating this entire stuff? So this one is not should not be like size or anything. So I think we can try to sort of pre-generate that thing. Mm, pre-generate that thing. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, so preview uh, stream. Uh, let's put that in a static memory, I think. Uh, so it's going to be s in 16, uh, preview stream, and we're going to have some sort of like a capacity, right? Uh, preview stream capacity, uh, and then we're also going to have, well, capacity is going to be the length of that entire thing, so it's fine. Uh, right, and here, before doing anything, we're going to just generate a small chunk of that thing. Uh, right, so white noise, right, uh, I'm going to use the same generator, right, so basically we're not going to start at that specific state of the generator, we're going to let it uh, go a little bit for a small chunk, uh, but that's totally fine, I think, because it's a random noise anyway, so who cares. Uh, so then we're going to do preview uh, stream, and then here we're going to use the capacity of the stream preview uh, stream capacity. So we pre-generate like a small uh, chunk of the wave that we want to, you know, render in here. Uh, so let's go ahead and compile this entire thing and see how it goes. Uh, unused variables. Um, mm, Emacs is jumping around really hard. Uh, renderer and then void position x. Y stream length. So what else do we have in here? Uh, step time. Oh yeah, I renamed all of these things in here. So now I have to go through this entire stuff. Uh, so I call this thing thickness, I suppose. Uh, slider thickness. Uh, right. So this is a slider grip color. And this one is going to be slider grip size. Slider. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so what is it complaining about? Undeclared. Okay, define preview stream cap. How many do we want to generate? I suppose maybe something like 100 should be enough. Uh, we can always adjust that value. We can always adjust that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, okay, so and this one is going to be just the capacity, right? So this is just the capacity. Uh, all right, so and it fails in here because this entire thing is not implemented yet. That's fine. That is totally fine. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now, 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 now. Uh, um, we need to know what's the essentially width of a single sample, right? So we have 100 by 300. But we have this amount of samples. Uh, so essentially what we need to do, we need to know the, the, the width of a single sample. Uh, right, so sample width, let's call it like this. It's a sample width. We're going to take the width, uh, like wave preview width, and we're going to define it uh, divided by uh, stream length. There we go, we've got that. So maybe I also want to actually cast it to flow just in case. So this is a single, single thing. And that is basically it, believe it or not, right? So now we need to start iterating through the samples, uh, right? Uh, and, you know, rendering them. So uh, we're going to iterate through the stream length, plus plus i, there we go. Might as well actually remove this entire thing. Um, cool. So what's going to be the x of the sample, right? So uh, it's going to be sample x. It is located at i multiplied by sample width, right? So this is where it is in x somewhere, right? So this is where it is in x. Uh, in terms of y, y will depend very much on the actual value. So here we have samples signed integer 16-bit integer, right? So that means it can go also negative, right? It can also go negative. Uh, one of the things we probably want to do is um, inverse map this thing uh, to 0, 1 and then map it back to a like value in height. Uh, right, so let me actually see how we can do that. Uh, two, two, two. So I have inverse lerp in here. So here is the inverse lerp. Uh, so a and b are minimum and maximum. So I need to know the minimum value of s int 16, right? And the maximum value of s int 16, right? And I'm going to put the actual sample in here. Preview, uh, preview stream i. So I inverse lerped it, right? So and that basically gives me gives me the value from zero to one, and I need to map it to like a, like a height, right? So I need to do lerp. Uh, let me see uh, the actual value of lerp. So and the minimum here is going to be the position y of this thing. So here's the position y, and the maximum is going to be position y plus the height of the preview. Uh, preview height. Uh, to, 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 uh, what the hell is going on? Uh, it's kind of oh, all right. So that's probably fine. I just need to do that a little bit more careful. So this is what we're gonna have in here. Uh, I wonder if I put this thing in here. Eh, it still it still sucks. But that's that's essentially what I want to do in here, right? So I'm taking this value. Uh, right, this value can be from minimum s in 16 to maximum s uh, in 16. Uh, so that will map it to 0, 1, and then I map it between this range, and that gives me the actual like x. Uh, the actual x where it is going to be located. Though uh, it's it's a bit annoying. I still will have to construct a rectangle out of that, uh, but we'll see how it goes. So first, I want to try to compile this thing because I don't know if this thing works right. I'm not sure if this is how we do that. Uh, so it's definitely not how we do that. Uh, lerp, uh, yeah, this one has to be lerp. And we don't have min s in 16. So I would presume that SDL defines the minimum and maximum value, like limits for its uh, for its type. It should define the limits for its types. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, so just a second. Uh, 
Uh, so let me take a look at SDL2. Uh, do we have any limits? Uh, we don't really have any limits, but we can try to grab for these things. Uh, I'm going to grab for type def uh, that contains the int. Uh, can I do something like this? Uh, and then just do um, s int 16. Uh, here it's, here's where it's, there we go. Called it. So here are the, the limits. They are defined along with these things, which is beautiful. Okay, that's cool. So now I can use this stuff. Um, cool. And I almost guessed it correctly. Holy shit. So the only thing I needed in here is basically the, the prefix SDL, right? So I have a pretty good intuition when it comes to this kind of stuff, right? Anyways, uh, so uh, let me try to recompile the entire thing and see if it works now. So this is going to be build sh and uh, preview. It's not called preview stream or what is it called? It's just called stream. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, do we have anything else? Sample. So this kind of stuff is unused. I think uh, we only have like unused variables uh, errors. Okay, so everything's fine. Everything is compiling. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so that gives us just the position where we have to start rendering things. So let me draw super quick. I don't know where to put my thing. So essentially, we've got something like this. We figured out the X and we figured out the Y, right? So, and we can basically already kind of draw just a single line uh right but we have to like know where it goes oh, oh boy so yeah i need to construct like a rectangle out of that right i need to construct a rectangle out of that and what's important is that uh i have to specify this thing I have to specify the left top corner uh right and then width and height and i have to have a special situation when uh, this thing is negative, right? I have to specify that differently, right? Because the uh, left top corner is different. So what I'm thinking is that can I just like use this position as the left top corner and just basically say that uh, this thing has a negative height? Will it draw that thing correctly? I wonder. That's a good question, I think. So uh, let me see. Let's take a look at SDL rect definition. I think it should be able to do that, right? It should support uh, negative things. Uh, SDL2, um, do we have rect? Yeah, we do have rect. And let's take a look at the rect definition. So rect definition. Okay, so as you can see, width and height are integers and integers are signs. So that means they can be negative, right? They, hand, they say nothing about, uh, you know, how they handle negative things. But we can just conduct an experiment, I think. I think we can try to conduct an experiment super quick. Um, so let me see. Uh, SDL uh, fill. How do you fill rect? Uh, fill rect. There we go. So let's copy paste this entire thing and let's put it somewhere here. Right. So this is just an experiment rectangle just an experiment rectangle. So we're going to give it like a special color of some sort. Uh, I think it's going to be maybe let's make it blue, right? So this is going to be the blue color. So it's going to be located somewhere in um, 300 by 300, right? So 300 by 300 and its size is going to be 100 by 100. All right, and then we just fill this entire thing and let's take a look at how it looks like. So here, um, eh, so let's do void sample x and sample y. Uh, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work now? Yo, probably no. Uh, renderer, uh, do you wanna do anything else? Void pause x. Uh, okay, so let's try to run this entire thing. Uh, and it still complains about this thing, so let's remove that. Okay, so here is the rectangle, right? So we're using positive uh, width and height. The question is, what if we use negative width now? What's gonna happen? Is it gonna like basically flip uh, vertically? Actually, it has to be height. 
It did in fact flip vertically, as you can see, it's actually kind of flipped and it's closer to, to this thing. So if I use the, the positive one, it's actually flipped back. Okay, so width and height can be negative and we can use that, uh, which is super nice. I wasn't sure if it supports that because I like didn't obviously see that. Didn't, Im didn't immediately see that in the documentation, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, so let me let me see what we can do now. Okay. Uh, so this is X and Y. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, so we need to construct the rectangle, right? SDL rect. Uh, let's quickly construct the rectangle. In terms of X, it's going to be just a simple X. Y is going to be slightly different, right? Y is essentially uh, position Y plus half of the height, right? Wave uh, uh, preview height uh, divided by two. So this is that. Width is pretty simple, all right? So the width is going to be sample width, right? So this is the sample width. Height will depend. Height will depend. So essentially, we have to take the sample Y, right? The sample Y and subtract this value from it, I think. Right, so we have to subtract this value from it. And this value is kind of like constant. Uh, right. Mm, 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 mm. So how should I call that? So it's sort of like a y-axis, right? So it's a y-axis where it is located. Uh, so, and this is what we're gonna put in here, y-axis. Uh-huh, put it in here, and there we go. So this is going to be sample minus y axis. So there we go. Mm, there we go, there we go, there we go. So where do I do the uh, fill rect? I need to copy paste this thing one more time. So this is how we set the currently rendering color. Um, wave uh, preview sample color right so we need to have this thing uh, and then fill rect i'm gonna put it in here that should be enough i think that should be enough mm -hmm. okay so we don't have this thing defined anywhere so let's actually quickly define it somewhere so what's going to be the color in here? Uh, maybe it's going to be sort of like yellowish. Uh, so it's red and green, like so. Um, and it didn't do shit. That's cool. I'm really, I'm really happy that it didn't do shit. That's super cool. Um, so is that because we never called it anywhere, or what's going on? Uh, we actually call it in here and everything seems to be fine it's just like it doesn't really draw anything um so let me see so we just do present in here and here is the floating x and position x is never used which is kind of sus uh -huh, i can see that so th th this is y uh -huh, so it has to be something like position x plus all right so let's actually put it somewhere here and uh, we can't see shit, unfortunately the question is why? I don't really know why. So uh, let's actually take a look at the debugger, right? Uh, let's take a look at the debugger and see if it's even doing anything. I don't know. Uh, so we should have something in that thing. So it's going to be GDB wine. Uh, let's break this entire thing and let's run this entire stuff. And uh, okay. So how many things we have in here? How many samples? We have 100 samples, which is reasonable. So, and let's actually try to print these 100 samples. Uh, so they are kind of small, not gonna lie. We're actually drawing them very, very small. And this is, I suppose, because they are generated very small, right? So kind of like in here, we can clearly see that they're sort of growing. Yeah, they're sort of growing. I, I suppose, yeah, we, we caught it on sort of like edge. It feels like 100 is not really enough 
to capture this entire stuff. So let's actually try to increase the amount of samples. This is one of the things we can do. I don't really want to like have too many samples, uh, right? Because it will be really slow to draw. Uh, and here's an interesting thing. If we're gonna have, if we'll have to draw a lot of samples just to get the gist of this entire thing, we can try to draw them into a texture Right, we, we can basically pre-cache the drawing of the wave, right? And we can generate, regenerate that texture uh, on like every time we regenerate the wave or something. So to make it a little bit more, like a little bit less expensive. But we, we'll see. Let's not uh, jump into the um, into the optimization right away. All right. So the thing we want to do, we want to increase the capacity, right? So this is going to be. Let's let's say that we want to have two hundred samples. Uh, right, so we still can't see, like, I would expect to see at least something, right? Like, around here, there somewhere, but there's nothing. There's, like, literally nothing, which is super sus. What about thousands of the samples, right? So, will we see anything? We can't see. Okay, so this could be not problem in that, right? This could be not problem in that. Maybe it's a problem with the actual rectangle that we're generating. Let's actually go into that. Uh, right, wave. Um, so what was it called? I forgot what it was called. Uh, wave preview. Right, so this is going to be wave preview and let's run it. Uh, all right, so and let me see. Uh, okay, so I actually want to go inside of this entire thing and take a look at the rectangle. Uh, right, okay, so let's take a look at the rectangle. What do we have in here? Width and height turned out to be zero. Nice. That is very, very cool. So it is so small, it turned out to be zero. That's how small it is. But why height turned out to be zero as well? Mm -hmm. So it's just like too small for this stuff. It's just too small for this stuff, I think. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So let me let me see what's going on. Uh, wave preview. So sample width. Uh, if I take a look at the sample width in here, right? So sample width, it is like like one tenth or something. It is literally one tenth. Um, hmm. Mm, so that means we'll have to generate that slightly differently. And uh, in terms of like sample y, so here is a sample y and uh, y axis, right? So it's not really changing that much. It's not really changing that much. And I suppose like the thing we probably have to do, we have to, we should not use the mean and like mean S in 16 and max S16, because we're actually generating it slightly lower, right? So that's basically the height at which we are generating this entire thing. Um, <clears throat> and because of that, because of that, I think, we have to use this as min and max, right? Uh, let me try to do that. So this is going to be, this is the minimum, right? So we kind of do like minus one, uh, right? But also negative, right? Also negative, like so. Uh, and then we use the same thing, but positive, right? So this is going to be like the actual range that we're using in here. Um, okay, so let me see. And because of that, we want to reduce the amount of samples yet again, uh, right? Uh, so what was that? It was a thousand of them preview streams. So let's actually make it like 10 of them. So at least we can see something and it still doesn't show. It still doesn't show them. Uh, okay, let's actually take a look if it uh, if it improved anything. So we're gonna break wave preview, uh, run it, and let me see. So uh, stream len has to be ten of them. Okay, so let's take a look at sample width. Sample width width is ten pixels, which is already good. Okay, so that's already fine. Uh, okay, so then. Um, Okay, we have sample Y, uh, which is 450. Uh, so it didn't really grow that much. So that's probably the reason. 
Yeah. So what I'm thinking is that this is probably because of the interpolation, because it just grows too slow. Uh, so one of the things we can do, we can just basically set the current step time, uh, the current step time as uh, one, right? And we'll kind of see something, I think, hopefully. Uh, finally, it's kind of like unpleasant to listen to, but we can finally see the wave in here. Right, and we can clearly see that the width is kind of too small for what we're trying to achieve, right? Uh, so let's actually make the width a little bit better. So at least we can see something, at least we can start playing with the constants to make it uh, look a little bit better. I also want to actually reduce the volume to like five, uh, uh, 0 0.5, so it's not that... Uh, not that harsh. Uh, okay, so let me see. So this is going to be a uh, wave preview. So width, I think width has to be way bigger. I think I confused this kind of stuff. So let's actually make it like this. So it's definitely bigger. Slider, as far as I know, it's like 500. So we can even go like 1000 in here. Um, I, I'm modifying the wrong thing. So this is this has to be 1000 in here. Uh, there we go. So it's like a little bit bigger now. Uh, right. So which allows us to uh, have more uh, samples, right? So it allows us to have more samples in here. Uh, so let's actually say that we want to have like 100 of them finally. So that will give us... This looks way better, right? This definitely looks way better. Um, cool. Uh, so if we have the volume back to one, right, if we have a uh, volume back to one, uh, it's going to be a little bit more pronounced, hopefully, uh, right, it's going to be like a little bit bigger, so I hope it's not too loud, uh, according to my OBS, it is not very loud, but we don't see like this thing being more or less interpolated because we don't do any interpolation right now. Uh, we can basically do the step time, but let's actually do step time like two. Uh, so here we should start to see more uh, interpolation. Uh, there we go. So n now, as you can see, there's a little bit more interpolation, but it still kind of jumps around. Uh, and if I put something like 10 in here, uh, right, so you can... This is very interesting. It gives like a lot of insights into like what the hell is going on in here, I think. Uh, and you can't see anymore if you if you like make a too big of a step. It's just like you can't see. But uh, if you do like a 10, this is what you can see. Uh, all right, so we start to have problems when we have too many of these things. So we need to render that thing slightly differently. Uh, we need to render it slightly differently. Also, I don't really like in terms of like X where it is located like it's kind of weird how it is not located at the same place as like everything there's probably some kind of a bug in there but that's uh, that's pretty cool uh okay so what i would like to to have in here mm, what i'd like to have in here is probably like every time the uh one of the sliders is modified we want to regenerate the preview stream that's what we want to do Mm. And we want to regenerate the preview stream with the initial state of the generator, right? So let's actually do something like uh, constant uh, init gen, right? And this is what we're going to have in here, right? So this init gen, uh, right? And we're going to just do a copy. I hope this works in C. I'm not sure if it does. I think, okay, so you can just like do, do the copy of this thing. Okay, cool. Uh, and uh, essentially... I want to do the following thing. Uh, I want to do um, again preview again. I'm gonna use the initial state of the generator. And goddamn, it's not gonna really work well because we need to be able to like use these parameters in here. So it's kind of it's kind of meh. So yeah, let's actually go back. Uh, I think I'm gonna just just do again. Uh, and in here, I'm gonna do again but i also want to reset the entire thing uh man okay so what i'm thinking is that i'm gonna do it like this 
Uh, right. So seed is going to be 69. Metal core kind. Thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic C Club. So the step time is going to be the step time of the um, of the generator. And the volume, uh, the volume is going to be the volume of this thing as well. All right. So, uh, and then we just use the preview uh, generator, right? So we just use the preview generator. We, we create like a temporary uh, generator. We use it and we just throw it away, right? And this thing is kind of based on the current generator, right? So uh, maybe because of that, we want to have some sort of a function that uh, regenerates the preview. Uh, regen preview. Uh, previous stream and we'll just accept uh, the generator right we'll accept the generator and just do that for you um, uh, region so we're gonna put this thing in here uh, so and we just use this thing like that um, so now um, regen preview stream and we provide this thing hopefully that will look more or less good uh, and what i want to be able to do now i want to be able to know whether the slider updated the value or not right i want to be able to know that the question is how can we know that i suppose we can make the slider return a value saying that it's updated something or not right so essentially like boolean right uh, and it will return true here, indicating that it updated something, or otherwise it will return false, indicating that it never updated anything. Uh, so that's pretty convenient. So now uh, we can do something like this, right? If this slider updated the value, we regenerate the current preview uh, with the current generator. And we have to do that on all of these sliders, right? Any slider that changes the shape of the of the wave should regenerate the previous stream, right? There we go. Uh, let's recompile the entire thing and let's see if it works. It's pretty cool, I think. So we can actually see, uh, you know, how the wave changing. And now if we change the actual, like, how it's spread, uh, right? So I'm gonna increase this thing, all right. And we can actually see how it's spread. So as you can see, like we're updating the parameters of the wave and we can instantly see how it affects the shape of the wave. So that's precisely what I wanted to have. Right, before going and trying to improve the quality of the sound, because we want to actually see how the uh, the wave is changing. That's what we want to see. Uh, right. So, but the problem here is that when you start to have like a lot of these things, right? So it, now we can see why we couldn't see anything when this value was too big, right? So that's precisely the reason why we couldn't see anything at all. Uh, right. So, so that's so cool. I really like that. Uh, okay. So <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, it would be like, I think this preview still requires a little bit of like, you know, polishing, all right. To make it more usable and stuff like that, but it works, right. It definitely works. Uh, it definitely works. Um, add a slider for number of samples to preview. I could do that, but the problem is that the number of samples um, requires um, a reallocation of the memory. And I don't really want to deal with the memory management right now, especially after streaming for two hours. So I don't think I'm going to do that. Right. So maybe I'm going to do that later. Right. Uh, so we can actually put that as a to do. Uh, right. I'm going to put it to do saying that, uh, you know, we have a special thing for the sliders, right? So where is the enumeration for the sliders? Uh, all right. So it's going to be to do add a slider for the amount of preview samples, right? So, and I really want to do something for 
like for this kind of stuff if that makes any sense uh man it's so fucking cool holy shit i really like how also stable this entire wave is right so it doesn't jump around or anything like that and this is because we preserve the state of the random number generator right so we save the state and we restore it uh right so and because of that you can just like play with these parameters like that and you can see how it affects it and stuff like this so oh you can already kind of see that the interpolation that we're using in here is kind of lame right so it's it's kind of interpolated in here but when the uh, the wave rises, it's like it's like using the wrong one. It has to use like a different one. So it still creates these sharp edges, which result in like uh, so tooth, uh, you know, sound or whatever. Uh, right. We can actually get rid of the. I think I'm using like cosine. Yeah, I'm using cosine. I think I was just experimenting with different things. Uh, let's just use like a linear interpolation. This is how linear interpolation looks like. So this is a linear one. Uh, right, so we can we can see how it, it goes. Though it kind of jumps around very quickly, as you can see, it's it's kind of weird, right? So it just goes here and then it jumps. It doesn't really like properly go around. It's really weird. So we can already see that there is some bug in the implementation, right? And you can try to interpolate something by doing like a square, uh, like so. Um, it looks like it's sort of like rounded, but it still creates these sharp edges, right? It still creates the sharp edges. So as you can see, this tool is already extremely useful for, uh, you know, debugging things. Uh, for Dakin, I hope I pronounced your nickname correctly. Thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so it is extremely useful. I kind of want to reduce the minimum and maximum of uh, the available values. Uh, right, so for the slider, I mean for the frequency. So right now for the frequency we use like 200. I think 200 is just too much. Uh, let's actually keep it to like, like 50. And the initial value is going to be 10. Right, so let's actually not make it very big because it's... Yeah, w w I still want to be able to like see what's going on. Oh, that's very weird. Okay, that's cool. Alright, so anyway, I, I want to do a commit and I want to try to understand like what went wrong with the current generation, right? Because I actually expected the wave to look slightly different, right? As I already said, I expected to for that thing to actually properly interpolate right because i'm generating random points at like uh equal intervals and i expected it to be like like this but maybe it is already like that maybe though if it like generates several random things on the same sort of plane it may create these weird situations maybe we need to alternate the sign on each sample so it's sort of like forced to go up and down. So yeah, we generate a random number, but we also remember what was the sign. If, in, if the sign was positive, we can use a negative. So each random thing it basically goes like negative, positive, negative, positive, and uh, it creates like this kind of thing, which is probably what we want. We can try to do that. So since we have visualization, we can actually clearly see that, which is nice. Uh, all right, so uh, I'm gonna do a committee and then we're gonna uh, experiment a little bit. Uh, so, two, 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 two. so let me try to do this kind of thing. Uh, visualize a small section. Okay, so I'm gonna just copy paste this entire thing. Uh, two, 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 two. Visualize a small section of the white noise sound wave. And I'm gonna push that right into the repo. And uh, so now, uh, let me let me see. So you can find the source code of this project in the description if you're watching live, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, but if you're watching live, uh, I'm gonna give you the, uh, the source code right now. It is publicly available on GitLab for everyone for free. You can do whatever you want with it. So, okay. Um, we generate some sort of a sign. So here's where we generate the sign, which is nice. Uh, 
so maybe I'm gonna actually remove this entire thing and I'm gonna keep the sign. Uh, I'm gonna keep the sign as this thing. So this is gonna be S int 16 sign, um, which kind of means that. Mm, so if, if it's initially zero, it's gonna be annoying. So when we are regenerating the thing, when we are regenerating the thing, so this is the step. Uh, the step, if it's greater or equal than that, we go in a particular direction. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I know what the fuck is going So, So there is another bug in here as well, so that's fine. Uh, all right. So if sign is equal to zero, uh, right, sign is basically becomes equal to one, right. Uh, otherwise, uh, sign equal minus sign, something like that. So I'm a little bit tired right now, so I, I cannot think about like a uh, proper solution. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so this one, a known type s int. Uh, all right, so this is going to be s int. Uh, this one is a sign, so this is going to be a generator. Uh, right. So I don't really care whether it's a proper solution. Uh, I just want something to work. Oh, shit. It's actually there is some sort of a beep. Which is kind of interesting. Oh, this is kind of cool. I really like that. Wait. Can you hear that? You should be able to hear that. Okay, so uh, let me actually get rid of the interpolation and see. I think it's going to be like a, you know, yeah. That's cool. I really like that. Though I'm not sure what's up with these kind of things, right? So, oh yeah, so it kind of goes here, but it also jumps in a really weird way. So yeah, this is something that needs to be fixed. Right. So maybe this is something that we don't want to have, right? So because it kind of creates like this beep of some sort. Uh, in any case, we have uh, a tool that allows us to visualize and now we can use it to, to do something with this kind of stuff. Right. So, Yusu, 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 Kawaii freaking Desu. Isn't that cool? Isn't that Paug? Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Alrighty, that's pretty cool. All right, does anyone have any questions? Maybe. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It looks like uh, it looks a little bit like it's interpolating between two samples and then jump into the third one. Yeah, I actually like the generator itself. I actually hacked together because I didn't really care uh, because I planned this visualization tool anyway. Right. So I just hacked together that sort of produces some sort of a sound. And until we have uh, a proper visualization tool, it's like there's no point in spending too much effort into trying to get it right, because it's going to be actually not particularly convenient. You can't see anything. Right. This kind of stuff is better like developed uh, with some sort of visualization. So there's probably some bugs in there. Maybe the entire generation is going to be rewritten completely. Uh, right. As since we have visualization. Um, but before I can do that, I also want to polish up the visualization as well to make it even more useful and stuff like that. But yeah. <laughs> Um, so can you just quickly explain what happens? We are generating white noise. That's as quick as I can explain this thing. Um, to, 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 um, totally agree, visualization is the key. Yes. So the art of getting shit done. We just slap things together until we have a proper tools. Once we have a proper tools, uh, we can polish things up. Um, right. All right, I guess that's it for today. 
so already streaming for two hours. Um, uh, that's for the day. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you all on the next Zozin session. I will see you all on the next session. Uh, Zozin session. Thank you for all of the subscriptions, all of the bits and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go. Love you. Mwah.